Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. Now that we've finished our right hand triangle, it's time to continue our entrelock lessons with the right side rectangles, like those used in my Bon Voyage shawl. Remember in entrelock, instead of working all the way across the piece, back and forth in rows, instead we focus on one small shape at a time. And in this case, it's going to be these stockinette stitch rectangles. We'll begin by picking up new stitches along the side of this rectangle below. Then on every right side row of our new rectangle, we'll close up the gap between our new rectangle and the existing rectangle by working a left slanting decrease until all of these gaps have been closed. Let's get started. Picking up stitches is probably the one skill in entrelock that knitters are the most concerned about. But if you look for landmarks in your knitting, it's really not that bad. Stitches are picked up every other row along the side of this rectangle. You end up with the same number of picked up stitches here as you have stitches across this edge. So in my case, I have 14 stitches here, so I need to pick up 14 stitches along this edge. Now let's look for some landmarks. Your landmarks might be slightly different if you use a different stitch pattern for your base or wrong side rectangles. But the process of the, is the same for identifying those landmarks. This is the last rectangle stitch that I work together with the last stitch of the triangle. I don't necessarily want to make any picked up stitches here. For me, this little bump indicates a row of stitches. That's the one I'm going to skip because I'm picking up my stitches every other row. After the bump, I'll pick up a stitch and then another bump and I'll pick up a stitch and a bump and pick up a stitch. So I end up picking up, there's the bump, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen stitches, one after each bump along this edge. Now I'm ready to lift up the stitches along the edge of my rectangle. A lot of knitters are able to do this with just their right needle tip. However, I like to get a little bit of help from the left needle tip when I'm picking up stitches. It makes things a little bit easier to understand what's happening and a little bit easier to manipulate, I think. Before I pick up any stitches, I'm just going to place a stitch marker here right onto my right needle. And that's just going to be a visual aid for me that separates the stitches that are here on the edge of the triangle that I just finished and the stitches that I'm picking up. So now let's look for our landmarks and my landmarks might be different than yours if you use a different stitch pattern for your base rectangles or your wrong side rectangles. But the basic idea is the same. Again, first I'm looking for that stitch that just got work together with the stitch from the triangle and that one I'm going to skip and then there's that bump which indicates one row that I'm going to skip and then I'm going to lift this next strand with my left needle tip from the front to the back and what this does is it places the leading leg of the stitch the first one that my working needle runs into at the front of my work and the trailing leg of the stitch at the back. And that's the same mounting you would have if you were just knitting along or purling along your stitches. 
you have a couple options here as you work this first stitch. You can either knit into the stitch like normal, or you can knit through the back loop. Both methods are perfectly fine. However, I like to knit through the back loop because what it does is it will twist this lifted strand and it will make the picked up stitches more inconspicuous on the wrong side. So I'm going to knit that lifted strand through the back loop. So here's the stitch that I just worked into. It comes all the way down to right there. So there's the stitch I worked into. There's the bump or the stitch that I'm going to skip. And there is the next strand that I'm going to lift by inserting my left needle from the front to the back under the strand. And then I'm going to knit through the back loop. Whether you choose to knit or knit through the back loop, make sure just to continue it for all of your picked up stitches on the right side. So again, here's the stitch that I just lifted and worked into. There's the bump. And there is the next strand that I'm going to lift by inserting from front to back and work through the back loop. There's the twisted strand I just worked into. There's the bump. And there's the next strand that I'm going to lift and knit through the back loop. And as you're working, you'll find that pretty soon you're able to just naturally feel and see when these are going to happen. You're not going to have to work through each time to talk yourself through the steps. So here is the stitch that I just lifted and twisted and worked into. There's the bump. That's the row that I'm going to skip. And there is the stitch I'm going to work into and knit through the back loop. So I'm going to continue on across and pick up the rest of my stitches. I have one more stitch to pick up after this bump right here. And if you've worked interlock before, you'll know that where the four corners of the rectangles all come together, this spot is very inherent to getting these weird little gaps and holes. But there's a few things that you can do to avoid those gaps and holes. Up until now along this edge, I've been picking up my stitch by lifting just a single strand along the edge and then knitting through the back loop. In this case, since I know that this point is already prone to gapping and holes, I'm actually going to go under two strands of the edge just to make sure that I can keep that nice and tight and closed. But after I pick them up, I'm just going to knit them through the back loop just like I've been doing for the rest of my picked up stitches. So now that all my stitches are picked up, I'm ready to start knitting this next rectangle. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my work over to the wrong side. Every wrong side row is going to be the same. You're either just going to work in your stitch pattern across the st stitches for the rectangle, or in our case, since our stitch pattern is just stockinette stitch, all of my wrong side rows are just going to be purled across the rectangle. So I'm going to purl across the 14 stitches of my rectangle and then turn my work over. I'm ready to work my first right side row. And for the time being, I'm going to leave this stitch marker hanging here just to remind me that I don't want to accidentally start working across this triangle. After the next couple rows, I'll take it off because it won't be such an issue and you'll see why. So now for every right side row of my rectangle, I'm going to just work in my pattern across until one stitch before this gap 
of the stitches of my new rectangle and the stitch from my next rectangle. So I'll work to one stitch before the gap and then I'll stop and work these two stitches together. So let's knit to one stitch before the gap in our pattern, which just happens to be stockinette stitch. I'm one stitch before that gap. So now to close the gap, I'm gonna do a left slanted decrease, which is a slip slip knit. So I'm gonna slip one stitch knit wise. I'm gonna slip the next stitch knit wise, and then I'm gonna work them together through the back loop. And then turn my stitch, or turn my work over to the wrong side. Get that cord out of the way. On the wrong side, we're just going to work across all the wrong side stitches. And again, since it's stock knit, we'll just purl across and then turn. And now you can see that there is a fairly noticeable height difference now starting to happen between this new rectangle where we're working and the trying right hand triangle that we already finished. So I'm going to take this stitch marker off now because I don't need it anymore as a reminder not to accidentally keep going across the triangle stitches. So now we'll go ahead and again on the right side we'll always knit to one stitch before the gap and then slip slip knit and on the wrong side we'll just purl across all of our stitches and we'll keep doing that until we've closed up the gap along the edge and worked all of these stitches and slip slip knit them together with all of the rectangle stitches. So I'll show one more time of doing that. So knit to one stitch before the gap and then slip slip knit to close up that gap. And then turn to the wrong side. And on the wrong side, we'll just purl across all of our rectangle stitches and then turn. I've worked across my right side rectangle to the very last right side row. So I have one last gap here to close up. So these are the stitches of my rectangle and this last one is the last stitch from the lower rectangle. So just like before, I'm gonna knit across to that one stitch before that gap. and then slip slip knit to close up that very last gap. And after the first right side rectangle is complete, the process is repeated for the next rectangle. You would pick up stitches every other row along the edge of the rectangle using landmarks as a guide and then on the wrong side you would just purl all of your stitches or work in pattern and on the right side of every right side row you would knit to one stitch before the gap and slip slip knit to close up the gap for demonstration purposes i am working on a smaller sample and i don't need to add any more right side rectangles also for demonstration purposes since i'm working on a smaller sample when I need to turn at the end of each of these short rows, I'm able to pick up and turn the whole piece over. When you're working on a longer and wider piece of entrelock, it's often easier to let the weight of your knitting rest on your lap and just rotate the needle you're working on back and forth 
either this way or this way from the front to the back instead of lifting the entire thing and turning the whole piece over. Another option when you're doing entrelock, if you don't want to keep turning your work, is to try reverse knitting or knitting the wrong side rows from the left to the right so you don't have to turn your work at all. And I'll include a link to my tutorial about reverse knitting in the video description below. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to work these right side rectangles in entrelock. And if you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!